Item Number SCP-6783 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures any archaeological discoveries pertaining to SCP-6783 are to be retrieved and replaced with falsified documentation about the time period of the Proterozoic Era. Evolutionary changes in Archaeological Site 101 are to be documented immediately. Any documents retrieved that relate or originate from SCP-6783 are to be studied and archived for any further knowledge of the nature of the anomaly. Anyone who discovers the true nature of SCP-6783 is to be administered Class A amnestics, and their discoveries are either to be archived or destroyed to prevent any further containment breaches. Description SCP-6783 is a series of notes from an unknown time traveler who appeared to have accidentally been transported approximately 1.8 billion years in the past to the Proterozoic Era. Footnote 1 referred to as the Boring Billion. Notes from SCP-6783 document the time traveler's experience and discoveries while in the Boring Billion, and remnants of the anomalous temporal device have been retrieved and are being studied to determine its origin in both manufacturing and time period. While remnants of the device have been retrieved, approximately only 46% of it has been determined to be in custody. Foundation archaeologists are presently still locating the remaining pieces of the time machine and the possible operator of the device. Addendum 1 After further anomalous temporal examination, the area where SCP-6783 was discovered seems to have its own anomalous temporal or evolutionary properties. Research into whether or not the temporal device has anything to do with it is ongoing. It should be noted that during the Proterozoic Era, no trees or animals were present. However, evidence shows flora and fauna appearing within range of SCP-6783. The anomalous evolution space dubbed by Foundation researchers caused biological evolution to rapidly progress. By order of the Overseer Council, the following file is Level 4-6783 classified. Unauthorized access is forbidden. Input Level 4-6783 Security Credentials Credentials Approved Item Number SCP-6783 Object Class Neutralized Special Containment Procedures Above all else, Dr. Evelyn Moore is to never view this document under any circumstances. If Dr. Moore does discover the true nature of SCP-6783, she is to be administered Class B amnestics to remove all details of SCP-6783. This particular procedure is only relevant until when she is determined to vanish. All and any unauthorized documentations of the true nature of SCP-6783 are to be replaced with falsified information like the false document above. If Dr. Moore requests access to SCP-6783, she is to be given the false document. Discoveries about the true nature of the Boring Billion are to be replaced with false information, and researchers that took part in the discovery are to be administered Class B amnestics. Research into other temporal anomalies similar to SCP-6783 is currently being conducted. Developments for a meme to persuade viewers of SCP-6783 not to view the document are currently in progress. Description: SCP-6783 is a series of notes from Foundation researcher Dr. Evelyn Moore, designated SCP-6783-1, from approximately 1.8 billion years ago. This has been confirmed by anachronistic anomalies that have landed in Foundation custody. Evelyn Moore, as of the moment of compiling this information, is a Level 3 researcher and part of Project Centauric, an effort to develop a viable way of temporal transportation through anomalous means and without negative side effects. Project Centauric has been designated as SCP-6783-2. According to information from SCP-6783, precisely on Dr. Moore will be the victim of a temporal anomaly while working on Project Centauric, and be transported to the Proterozoic Era. Further examination suggests that SCP-6783-2's anomalous qualities had completely halted biological evolution for approximately 1 billion years when first landing. Furthermore, it seemed to have dramatically slowed or stopped Dr. Moore's aging process altogether. 
Ongoing searches for SCP-6783-1's notes are in progress. So far, approximately 67% of the notes have been retrieved, and the majority redacted for present Dr. Moore's sake. Addendum 1 An incident report appeared on the desk of Dr. Head of Project Centauric, containing information of the incident that would be Dr. Moore's fate. The report was confirmed to be written by Dr. However, they don't recall writing it. Incident Report 6783 1 on Space-time anomaly appeared in the testing chamber of Project Centauric upon activation of the device. SCP-6783-1, along with the device, was engulfed in the space-time anomaly. Dr. Moore is presumed dead. Notes: Presumably the anachronistic copy of the incident was sent back in time to Dr. S desk during the incident. Addendum 2 during an archaeological dig at a notebook with the Foundation insignia on the front cover was discovered, and contents were salvaged for examination. Many of the pages were unintelligible and unreadable, presumably because of either age or erosion over the course of its burial. Carbon dating and anomalous temporal examination date it to 1.8 billion years ago. Archaeological Site 101 was established in the area where SCP-6783 was discovered. Access SCP-6783 Logs SCP-6783, Log 1 This is Dr. Evelyn Moore. I'm a Level 4 researcher for the SCP Foundation and stationed at Site- If you're reading this, then you've either rescued me and are going to document the incident of what I can only assume is some sort of space-time anomaly. Or, you're reading these in the future and I'm… dead. Let's hope it's the former. I'm writing to whoever reads this that Project Centauric was an unfortunate failure, and when the time comes, no pun intended, that you can stop me from going through. I sure hope you do, and that my husband will be able to see me again, and vice versa. I haven't exactly pinpointed my location yet, or even when I am. It's definitely before the Foundation. Way before. There's nothing but an open field here along with trees and a mountain range I can see in the distance. Project Centuric is busted at the moment, so it can't tell me the time period I'm in, but I suspect around a hundred years ago. Perhaps maybe a bit farther. I would say the area is serene enough for me to relax, but I can't stop thinking about how I'm gonna get back home. I will document whatever I can. I'm gonna try and relax. Dr. Moore signing off. SCP-6783, Log 2 This is Dr. Moore. It's been about a week since I got here and wrote. Luckily, Project Centauric is still able to log how long it's been. Speaking of which, yesterday I managed to do minor repairs on the machine and it's currently calculating the time period I'm in. It's taking a long time, kinda getting worried. Another thing to note, I walked around for a couple of days and I haven't seen any evidence of animals. Life still exists, at least plants do, but I see no signs of fauna around me. It's… quiet. I took a sample, and I'm gonna try to preserve it in the time box. Another thing to note is that I've started to call Project Centauric the time box. Thought it would keep my spirits up and make me feel like one of those adventurers that travel through time. I feel like Doctor Who, except more lost. I'm starting to wonder if they'll ever find me. I'm gonna take a nap and sleep it off. Luckily the time box has enough space inside for it. No mattress or sheets though. It's gonna be a long night. Doctor Moore signing off. SCP-6783, Log 3 Doctor Moore here. Still no sign of animals. The silence is… unsettling. Come to think of it, I haven't really spoken in about three weeks. No point to it since there's nothing to talk to. I'm worried that I'm eventually going to go crazy, it's been so long. I've noticed something else while being here. I haven't felt hunger or thirst while here. I can still eat and drink though, I tried, but I don't feel like I need to eat. I wonder if the time box has anything to do with it, and if it does, I wonder what else it's affected. Dr. Moore signing off. SCP-6783, Log 4 Dr. Moore here. It's been about two months. I haven't written in a while. I was trying to get my mind off the situation right now. The machine finished calculating when I am. According to it, 
I'm in the Proterozoic Era, basically 1.8 billion years in the past. 1.8 billion years from home. I don't feel like writing right now. SCP-6783, Log 5 Evelyn here. I walked into the woods and just kind of sat there for a long time. That's all. SCP-6783, Log 6 This is Evelyn. I walked back into the woods. This time I stayed longer, and I think I've come to a few conclusions. One thing, apparently my sense of time has been messed up. I was in those woods for a long time, apparently. Like, really long. I was in there for five years. Another thing to note is that I don't think I'm aging, or I'm just doing it really slow. Something tells me I'm in it for the long haul. Secondly, I remembered something about the Proterozoic Era that my husband Eric told me. That evolution for some reason completely halted and nothing happened for a billion years, hence the boring billion. The only form of life would be eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, which got me thinking. How is there a woods? I need to think for a bit. Dr. Moore signing off. SCP-6783, Log 7 Evelyn here. The weirdest thing happened when I woke up. I heard birds. There are no animals. I looked outside and there on one of the trees was a prehistoric looking bird. Dr. Moore drew a crude image of the bird onto the page. From what I can ascertain, it's an Archaeopteryx, which won't appear for another billion years or so. Footnote 2. Archaeopteryx, a genus of bird-like dinosaurs. So that means either the machine is wrong and I'm not a billion years in the past and are somewhere in the Tithonian era, or something is causing evolution to jumpstart. I'm a scientist. I need to find out. It's in my blood. Dr. Moore signing off. SCP-6783, Log 8 Evelyn here. Okay, I may not have the equipment I had back in the Foundation, but I was also an engineer. I managed to build a makeshift lab using spare parts from the time box to analyze what the hell is going on here. After some failed experiments and a few accidents, I saw something amazing. After fighting that bird for about an hour for its feather and looking at it closer, I saw that its cells were rapidly evolving at an extraordinary rate. Millions of years in a month. I guess that after I walked into the woods, things were left alone long enough to evolve some more. Oh, and speaking of the woods, I took a closer look at one of the trees after cutting it with a makeshift saw for a long time, and saw it only had five rings. I checked with a few more trees in different areas of the forest and saw the same result. I was in there for five years, so it makes sense why they would have rings, but does that mean that they grew when I landed? I'll do some more research. Dr. Moore signing off. SCP-6783, Log 9 Okay, it's been a couple months since I did a personal entry. Some of my research overtook space in the notebook, but I have some discoveries and conclusions to document. It turns out not only the time box is causing things to rapidly evolve, but it also causes them to age quickly. For some reason, not me, but when I went to check on the tree trunk sample again, it had grown 10 rings a day after I brought it in. Not everything around me is affected by the time box. I trekked for a bit in a mile or so and found out that when you exit the one mile radius, evolution is barely happening at all. Still barren. I concluded that the time box has a certain range that can affect evolution and aging. I call this range the evolution space. I haven't ascertained how fast it evolves and how strong it gets closer to the time box yet, but I have a feeling that it may be a decade every day within the machine. The most depressing conclusion I've come to is that, while this is beautiful, I don't think the foundation is coming for me. I can't let that stop me from figuring all this out though. Dr. Moore signing off. SCP-6783, Log 10 Dr. Moore here. It's been a long time since I last wrote. I took a piece of the time box, or a part of the main power source with me to do a field test. The heart of the box is a tachyon superfluid drive, or TSD. In layman's terms, the TSD manipulates the superfluidity of space-time to allow rifts in the universe to transport us to timelines. The creation of the TSD was the basis of Project Centauric. It may have also been a colossal failure, due to the fact that I was sent back in time and all that. 
Anyways, I took one of the TSDs with me and trekked far away from the box for a long time. Long enough for me to test its effects on nature. On that note, another anomalous effect the box had on me was apparently my sense of time is warping even more than when I first noticed. What I thought was a few hours turned out to be a few weeks. Days turned to months and so on. When I came back from my field test, over a decade had passed already. As for the field test, I attached a test log on the next page for you when this book gets recovered. I've started to look on the bright side. At least I won't notice how much time passes. Maybe I can just wait it out. I'm gonna go do some more te- Dr. Moore suddenly stops writing. A streak from the pencil appears on the page. Supposedly something interrupted her. Testing logs from SCP-6783. Test A. Subject. Acorn from a nearby tree. Procedure. Acorn was buried approximately 5 meters away from TSD. Results. In approximately 10 hours, a fully grown tree had been produced. Appearance resembles an ash tree. Analysis. Why the TSD had made it an ash tree when the acorn I harvested was completely different is beyond me. I hypothesize that the evolution space that the TSD creates also genetically mutates whatever evolves and grows. This implies a myriad of different possibilities. Test B. Subject. Angiosperm samples. Footnote 3. Plural noun. Angiosperms. A plant that has flowers and produces seeds enclosed within a carpel. The angiosperms are a large group and include herbaceous plants, shrubs, grasses, and most trees. Procedure. Placed approximately one meter from the TSD. Results. Various flowers started to sprout and spread around the TSD, including the flower species Monsechia vitali in the span of three hours. Analysis. Angiosperm is how flowers evolve and spread. There were many theories that dinosaurs may have eaten angiosperm and spread it around to evolve it. I think I just created the first flower, which is exciting. Test C. Subject. Procedure. Item placed one inch from the TSD for results. Analysis. Evolution is powerful, and there are some things we shouldn't mess with. Whatever just happened there took a week to kill and took me another week to recover from its venom. I'm eating its remains tonight. I am never doing that again. On another note, next time I go out for a field test, bring some weapons. Dr. Moore's notes. Something had occurred to me while doing tests, and the subjects all evolved rapidly when in close proximity to the TSD. So what's happening to me? I carried this all the way out here. I'm around it all hours of the day and I even slept near it back in the time box too. I wonder if it's been affecting me as well. Test D. Subject, Dr. Evelyn Moore. Procedure. Stationed on top of the TSD for several weeks. Results. No changes found. Analysis. I've determined that whatever caused my anomalous eternal youth is also preventing me from evolving biologically. SCP-6783, Log 11. Dr. Moore here. God, that took a long time. Sorry about that. For context, while I was gone, one of the animals apparently stuck around for a while, and it turned into a dinosaur. I don't even know how that happened. Maybe this evolution space is more anomalous than I previously thought. I definitely need more defenses, or at least find a way to stop dinosaurs from attacking me. I'm gonna go lie down to recover from the apparent dinosaur assault. Dr. Moore signing off. SCP-6783, Log 12. You bastards. You knew. You've always known. I don't know how long and I don't care. You knew. I woke up like usual and made myself a meal. I didn't need to eat, I just did it so I can have some resemblance to my old life. While I was eating, it clicked in my brain. Something finally made sense. SCP-6783 I'm it, aren't I? Notes from a billion years ago, all that bullshit. You always knew I was gonna go back, huh? That this entire mess would happen. It always confused me whenever I read the SCP-6783 file. Why was it so simple? Why was it so important? Now I know. You gave me a fucking fake. Why didn't you stop me? 
did you want this to happen? I can't believe that the Foundation just sat back and watched as I built the machine that would destroy my life. <sighs> I think I get it now. You're the most powerful organization in the whole world with numbers in the millions. You don't save lives, you make sure you keep existing even at the cost of your own blood. You secure, you contain, you protect. But when it comes to things like this, you'd watch from afar and see what happens, and make note of it for future use. That's science. You secure, contain, and protect all you want and there are thousands of us dying to whatever we're containing and no one else will ever know. We die in the dark, so you can live in the light. I'm done here. More signing off. Testing logs from SCP-6783. Addendum 3. Many of SCP-6783-1's notes were recovered after her supposed fallout with the Foundation. She seemed to have kept writing in her journal about her findings, perhaps as a way to keep herself sane or for the sake of stimuli. After a certain number of pages, the notes start to get incoherent and nonsensical. It was determined SCP-6783-1 started to write in a cryptogram to hide her research, perhaps as a way to spite the Foundation and impede our research. Options to have present-day SCP-6783-1 decode it has been denied, on the precedent that she might become suspicious. Foundation cryptologists were tasked to decode SCP-6783-1's notes. This proved difficult as SCP-6783-1 developed more cryptograms to impede research more. Researchers have been able to decrypt approximately 5% of the recovered instances of SCP-6783. A majority of SCP-6783-1's notes are still encrypted, and efforts to decode them are still in effect. Decrypted testing logs from SCP-6783 Test E. Subject. Two unknown species of fish. Procedure. One fish was placed in a container of room temperature water. The other fish was placed in an identical container, but the temperature was drastically lowered using Project Centurix liquid nitrogen cooling system. Both containers were placed approximately 2 meters away from Project Centurix. Results. The fish in the room temperature water evolved normally and grew into an adult fish in a matter of minutes. The fish in the frigid water aged the same, however it seemed to have evolved to resist the colder climates after an autopsy. Analysis. Biodiversity wished it could be this good. Quick evolution for the fish to adapt to the cold climates without having to go through natural selection. Test F. Subject. Nearby tree. Procedure. Had animals eat pieces of the leaves and placed a TSD 5 meters away while being eaten for approximately 3.4 minutes. Results. The tree had evolved into a Psychus revolution. Fauna consuming the tree reduced greatly. Analysis. As expected, the evolution space has influenced the tree to evolve into a Psychus revolution. Test G. Subject. A third fish. Procedure. Placed a TSD 1 meter next to it for approximately 10 minutes. Results. The subject grew legs and walked on land. Analysis. It's incredible. I caused the evolution of land animals. It never occurred to me that this would happen. I have to wait a couple of centuries though to make sure I don't mess anything up, but it's amazing to think this little guy would become a dinosaur one day. On that note, I should move the TSD away now. Further SCP-6783 Logs SCP-6783 Log 13 Dr. Moore here. I know what I said, but I came back for a reason. It seems I have been given a responsibility. For context, I examined the area and cellular life outside the evolution space and found something disturbing. Most likely when I landed here, evolution had completely stopped. Not just here, but the whole planet. Not only am I the cause of evolution happening, but I also caused the boring billion. When I landed, the temporal properties must have halted the evolutionary line. All life on Earth just stopped growing. I determined that the evolution space is sort of a reset zone for the evolutionary halt, but also acts as a speed boost. When something enters the evolution space, it negates the effects caused by the time box's initial landing. So that means one thing. If life is to exist on Earth and for humanity to also exist, I need to find a way to expand the evolution space and hopefully counteract its negative effects. Don't think I'm doing this for the Foundation. I'm doing this for my husband, for my family, and all of humanity. You're just lucky to be a part of it. I still don't forgive you. Dr. Moore signing off. 
SCP-6783, Log-14. I tried fixing the time box's mobility units, no luck. I also tried attaching animals to it and trying to pull it like a chariot. They evolved and broke free to kill me. I had to kill them first. I may be eternally young, but I don't think I'm fully immortal. After many other failed attempts, I came up with a different solution. I made makeshift wheels, a pulley system, and placed the time box on top of the wheels to make it into a sort of cart. I decided the only way to do my mission is to pull it myself. It's gonna be a long walk. Dr. Moore signing off. SCP-6783, Log-15 Evelyn here. I'm gonna start my expedition soon, but first I should explain the plan. I can't find any way to remotely reverse the effects Project Centurik caused. The only plausible way to actually reverse it in my current situation is to expose every square inch of Earth's surface to the evolution space. The only way to do that is manually, so I made a makeshift cart to put the time box in and I'm gonna pull it all over the Earth. It sounds tedious and inefficient, but it's the best I got. I can't enlist any animals since they'll rapidly evolve into- So it's up to me. This will be my last entry for a while. I need to keep moving so things don't get out of control. Everything from the landing site is already anomalous enough. We don't want it to get out of hand. I still don't forgive the Foundation for what they've done, but I hope I can accept your choices. I've already accepted I'm stuck here. Maybe I can evolve to forgive you. One day. This is Dr. Moore, signing off. Addendum 4. Foundation archaeologists managed to locate the remnants of SCP-6783-2. 78% of the machinery, according to the schematics brought back to the past, has been designated as missing or destroyed. No explanation has been given as to why, due to the fact the Tachyon Superfluid Drive, now designated SCP-6783-3, was functioning as intended from SCP-6783-1's notes. The degradation of SCP-6783-2 should have lasted the allotted time frame it was in. Additionally, while SCP-6783-1's notes were found close to SCP-6783-2, the remains of SCP-6783-1 have yet to be found. Warning: The following file is Level 5-6783 classified. Any attempt to access this file without Level 5-6783 authorization will be logged and will lead to immediate disciplinary action. Input Level 5 Credentials Credentials accepted. Addendum 5. The remnants of Dr. Evelyn Moore were located in- with the remains of her notebook that contained more contents of SCP-6783. The last pages detail her final days and what happened to SCP-6783-2. SCP-6783, Log-16 This is Dr. Moore. I don't know how long it's been, but all I know is that dinosaurs started appearing everywhere. I guess I did my mission right. I deactivated the TSD so it stops. I'm gonna wait a few thousand years in this cave to make sure evolution is continuing normally. I'll update you all when I can. Dr. Moore signing off. SCP-6783, Log-17 Oh my god. This is Dr. Moore. The dinosaurs just disappeared. I swear to you, I woke up and all of a sudden they're dead. There was no meteor, there was no sound. I checked the time box and apparently I just skipped over 61,000 years in one night. What the hell? They just up and vanished. Footnote 4. An SCP-3252 event. Why did it have to be me? Why was I the one who had to go back in time? Does the universe despise me so much that I have to witness the birth of nature as a form of punishment? I must have been terrible in a past life to deserve this. This is Dr. Moore, going to take a long nap. SCP-6783, Log-18 Dr. Moore here. Oh my god, I was walking around after the whole dinosaur thing. I apparently was asleep for a while, and I just spotted some humans near me. Primitive, and they're all just corralled in a cave. I think this is a hunter-gatherer society I stumbled upon. Did I cause them? Was I responsible for the evolution of man? This is a little much for me, but I won't approach them, just in case they accidentally worship me as a god or something and mess up the future. I'm seeing something strange right now as I write this. I'll get a closer look and get back to you. Dr. Moore signing off for now. SCP-6783, Log-19 Dr. Moore here. I found something incredible. I believe I found SCP-1000. Footnote 5, aka Bigfoot. Or the first generation of it at least. 
I'm hiding in the cave right now, making sure they don't see me, but I don't think they've risen to power just yet. They still seem very primitive. I wonder if I can witness them evolve to how the report describes them. I'll need to observe more carefully. I just came back from observing the instance of SCP-1000. I couldn't stay long because I thought they saw me, so I escaped. On the bright side, I can confirm that it is definitely SCP-1000. I noticed that they looked at the primitive humans for a long time before leaving. SCP-1000 never interacted with them and instead just avoided them, almost as if it were scared. I'll try to be a lot more careful next time I spy on SCP-1000. Dr. Moore signing off. SCP-6783, Log 20 This is Dr. Moore. It's been a long time, maybe a thousand years. I just realized that I've been saying that a lot nonchalantly, but I've had a few close calls with SCP-1000. Every time they come close to the cave, I try to close up the cave with a boulder. I made a pulley system to close the cave entrance using the pull of a vine. I didn't get a doctorate in engineering just by being decent. This is going to be a temporary home until both the humans and SCP-1000 leave the area. I feel like I'm going to be here for a while. Speaking of which, I studied the behavior of SCP-1000 some more. I found this spot where I could observe them in secret, and I noted a few things. Whenever SCP-1000 had a clear line of sight of the primitive humans, it would normally observe them as I do, in a secluded area where the humans wouldn't notice. But usually if a human happens to approach the area SCP-1000 is watching, it would back off and escape. This time was different. An instance of SCP-1000 approached a group of humans, but the humans were the ones who backed off this time. SCP-1000 seemed to have noticed this and continued to pester the humans. Luckily, one of the humans approached SCP-1000 and appeared hostile. That's when the instance of SCP-1000 backed off. Something tells me this won't be the last time SCP-1000 will provoke the humans. I'll document whatever I can. Dr. Moore signing off for now. SCP-6783, Log 21 Bad news. This is Dr. Moore and something terrible happened. I went out to study SCP-1000 more without being spotted. I wasn't caught, but when I came back, Project Centauric was missing. I don't know who stole it, but I have my suspicions. They managed to figure out how to move the door, and I've determined that they brought a group in to lift the time box. If they figure out how to work the TSD, we're fucked. I need to go find them. Dr. Moore signing off. SCP-6783, Log 22 Dr. Moore here. I know the truth now. I knew SCP-1000 stole Project Centuric, but I know why now. I don't know if the Foundation knew. Something tells me they didn't until they found my notes but it's very clear now. It's been a couple of decades, I managed to track them down. They were using the TSD and the machinery from Project Centuric to build their society. I hypothesized that the long-term exposure of the now reactivated TSD had evolved their brains to modern human capacities. Once they gained enough intelligence, SCP-1000 managed to reverse engineer the machinery from Project Centuric and use the evolution space produced by it to hyper-evolve the flora and fauna around them to utilize nature as the file described. If I'm recalling correctly, humanity should eradicate them soon. I just need to wait for more. Dr. Moore signing off. SCP-6783, Log 23 It's been a long time, maybe a century, and nothing yet. Maybe it's a lot later than I thought? SCP-6783, Log 24 Still waiting. I realized I didn't write much last time since I was just waiting, but I should mention that SCP-1000 has mastered transportation using hyper-evolved animals. Also, a thought occurred. Why would they fence off the humans? Are they zoo animals to them? Are they too scared? Could it be they realize that the device they use to evolve themselves can also be used to evolve the humans? Do they fear that humans could evolve? Evolve past them? It's an interesting thought. The evolution space is a powerful anomaly. It'll eventually run out of power, but by then they would have evolved past it. I also have a hypothesis of why it hasn't changed them as it did to- All those millennia ago. The TSD only has so much power, and a majority was used to fix the mess projects and Turek made a billion years ago. The less power it has, the slower that the evolution space affects living things. Eventually, it'll run out of power, but they won't need it anymore. The rate they're going, they should be beyond modern humans in about a decade. I don't understand why the humans haven't done anything yet. Maybe they need a push. It's risky, but I have no other choice. SCP-6783, Log 25 I approached a group of humans in the forest. They seemed scared by my outfit from the future. 
I tried to reassure them that I'm not a threat, but they ran off. This is going to be difficult. SCP-6783, Log 26 Okay, I managed to convince a smaller group to listen to me in the forest. Side note, I stole some of the tools from SCP-1000 in hopes to teach them how to use them. They don't speak any languages, but I was able to interpret using gestures and pictures. I'm going to teach them how to use the tools tomorrow. I need to rest for now. Dr. Moore signing off. SCP-6783, Log 27 I noticed something when I woke up. My skin was wrinkly. I think time is finally catching up. I don't know why, but I need to hurry. I'll be back once I finish teaching them. I was thinking. The story from SCP-1000 about how humanity revolted. I wonder if I was the cause? Maybe it was best for me to go back. On another note, lessons with the humans are going well, which is good since SCP-1000 had just mastered aerial transportation. Hopefully I managed to teach them enough before time catches up with me. Dr. Moore signing off. SCP-6783, log- This is Dr. Moore's final message. The humans have started to teach each other. Soon they're going to be able to revolt and cause an SK class dominance shift scenario. As for me, I'm barely able to write. My skin is becoming gray and wrinkly. My hands are bony. My hair is white. I can feel the ages catching up to me. Why it just started, I have no idea, but I had enough time to help humans. Before I die, I want to get a few things out there. Eric, my love, I'm sorry. Our time was short, but it was for the best. I hope when I'm gone, you move on and find love again. Dr. The head of Project Centuric, thank you for being one of my best friends in the Foundation. Try not to get killed out there. As for the SCP Foundation, I forgive you all. I can die knowing why this happened. Make sure I never find out the true nature of SCP-6783 until my time comes. No matter what I say, she will eventually be at peace with her destiny. I can die peacefully in the dark, knowing that humanity can live in the light. I'm sorry. Dr. Evelyn Moore, signing off for the last time. Addendum 5. Many of SCP-6783-1's notes have been determined to be missing. The notes on how Dr. Moore was able to teach the primitive humans, further tests, and further experiences in the past have either not been recovered or have been archived elsewhere from this document. Missing instances of SCP-6783 are currently being searched for. Finding new notes might shed some light on the nature of SCP-6783 and the experiences Dr. Moore had during the time she had been trapped in the past. It may also reveal where the missing parts of SCP-6783-2 may be located, in hopes for the Foundation to salvage and to possibly rebuild the device at a later date. The capabilities of SCP-6783-3 in producing the evolution space may be reverse engineered to aid the Foundation in some way. Though rudimentary in evolving living things, a way to refine it may be possible. One note was found sometime after Dr. Moore's final message to the future. The flowers are blooming, Eric. They look beautiful. Final Addendum The recovered cadaver of Evelyn Moore is to be preserved in Archaeological Site 101 and kept hidden away from present Dr. Moore. A false missing person case is to be fabricated in the event of present Dr. Moore's eventual disappearance. The future corpse will be relocated to a nearby area of Dr. Moore's residence to be given a proper burial. Message from O5-6 SCP-6783 is unique. It is the fact we know the fate of Evelyn Moore, and we must keep it a secret from her. If it seems unethical to keep her in the dark, you must remember what is at stake. If Dr. Moore does not go back in time, she can never help humanity become the dominant species. To ensure our existence, we must cast aside the sympathy for her and let nature take its course. Remember what she sacrificed for us. For humanity. She died in the dark, so we can live in the light. 056. That's it for today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to my level 4 patrons Alexis is a great, Lesby Friends, Scrubversive, and Max Loves Ears.
If you would like to see your name at the end of my videos, see my videos early, and get some other cool perks, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.